Our next guest uh, calls the GOP plan a thinly veiled reverse Robin Hood. Billionaire Democratic donor Tom Steyer, of course, is the founder and president of Next Gen America. Tom, it's good to have you back. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a lot of supporters say this bill is going to unleash a lot of economic activity. How are they wrong? Well, they're just making that up. I mean, we just heard the numbers that this will have a very modest impact at best on the overall economy. But what we do know for sure is that this will dramatically exacerbate inequality in the United States because it will take a gigantic amount of money and hand it to the rich people in the United States. And over time, 87 million Americans will have their taxes actually go up as a result of this. This is absolutely reverse Robin Hood. It has been painted uh, by opponents as a, a break, uh, a tax break for the wealthy. And yet, everyone on our show this morning, Ken Langone, we had a discussion with Jim Cramer this morning uh, saying the wealthy are going to pay more. How does that work? Listen, Ken Langone and Jim Cramer happen to be the wealthy. If you go and take a look, these are huge tax breaks for the biggest corporations. That's the first thing they're doing. OK, the biggest corporations are owned by the wealthy. That's who actually owns those shares. And secondly, if you look, they're changing a lot of specific things to give chances for people to get lower tax breaks by changing their tax status. So, in fact, what we're really going to see here is a dramatic pushing of money out of the government into the pockets of rich people. And then the second question is going to be, how is the government going to deliver the kind of health care services, the kind of education, the kind of job training that, that they traditionally have? And the answer is they're going to cut all those things. That's the second step. People are going to have worse services because we can't afford them because of the deficit. When it comes to ordinary income and individual tax rates, though, for the majority of Americans, it's lower for longer, right? It's when you have a high ordinary income, you will definitely be paying more in taxes under this bill. The way this is going to work is you, everybody is looking just separately at the tax plan. And the tax plan delivers the vast bulk of it to rich people. The vast bulk of the savings goes to the very top end of the income distribution. But you can't look at this tax because bill that creates a billion, income, a trillion. Because they're not being taxed on ordinary income, right? Because you're talking, yes. you're separating out ordinary yes. income, right? But, but what I said was factually correct about ordinary income, correct? But the, the point here is they keep trying to get you to look at only very specific small slices, ordinary income, instead of how everybody actually get taxed across the board. And they try and separate the impact of the tax plan on health care, the impact of the tax plan on spending. In fact, if you look, if they do what they're talking about in health care, there'll be an immediate $25 billion cut to Medicare. There'll be 13 million people who don't have health insurance. P middle class families will pay $2,000 more in health care per year. So you can't just look at this tax plan and look at the, the tax rate on ordinary income and draw any conclusions. It's part of a much broader picture. And that broader picture is an absolutely terrible one for working Americans. And it delivers massive benefits to the richest Americans, which is why this tax bill is getting passed. Uh, Tom, it, uh, not to the richest Americans who have a W-2 filed in California where you are or New York or New Jersey or other high tax states. I'm curious I'm as aware, to your thoughts. In about, addition, hold on, ahead. let me finish um, the the. The lack of deductibility of state and local income taxes, which I've talked about a lot here. Um, what impact do you think that's going to have on states like the one you're in and their ability to attract workers, keep workers, businesses, and overall um, continue what has been a more generous social welfare policy in these states? Look, they're obviously hitting taxpayers in states that have high uh, income taxes, income tax rates. And that's deliberate because those tend to be blue states, predominantly Democratic states, which are absolutely the targets of this Republican Congress. But what we already see in those states is those states subsidize the red states already. So what we're seeing, this is an absolutely unfair attack on the high tax states. It, there are 14 Republican Congress people 
from California alone. I don't know how many there are from New York and New Jersey, which are the other two states that are dramatically targeted. And if those people vote for it, they are voting directly against their constituents. They're voting for their constituents to have higher taxes, lower health care, and in general, a much tougher life. The lower health care that you keep talking about, that's because of the repeal for the mandate, right? That would be people who simply choose not to buy health insurance, correct, as they are currently it's, mandated no, it's, to it's do? No, it's also going to be, I believe it will also raise the cost of health care for middle class families who are buying health care. But in addition, you can't look at a trillion to a trillion and a half increase to the deficit and think that that will have no impact on spending going forward. Of course it will. This is all part of a much broader picture of cut taxes, cut services, smaller government, take, keep all the money with the rich and deliver nothing to working families. That you can't look at this tax bill just by itself. This is just part of a total program to try and revamp our government and to do have a much less fair, just America and basically to take it out of the hides of working families across the country. Tom, a lot of uh, viewers writing in, listening to what you're saying, uh, and, and to your argument that it benefits owners of capital or stocks, that makes sense. But they say, hey, I'm a guy in Oklahoma. I own a lot of stocks. This is going to make me more wealthy. Well, I mean, how do, you, how do you square that argument that the number of people with 401ks are going to benefit if, in fact, the White House lets the economy run warm? Look, the, the, that's absolutely, you just described somebody who it actually is going to be good for. If you're in a low income tax state and you have a lot of money and own a bunch of stock, absolutely this is good for you. But you can't take a trillion to a trillion and a half dollars away from the federal government and think nobody gets hurt. That's just not true. The fact of the matter is you're delivering money to one group of people, which is large corporations and rich people and you're taking money away from the government and therefore you're taking the money away from the services that are being delivered to the American people. That's just what's going on here. And everything else that people talk about to try and keep you on the smallest, narrowest way of looking at this is just a distraction from that very distinct, straightforward proposition, which is we're going to deliver money to the rich people who own the big corporations and through a bunch of tax gimmicks and we're going to take money away from the government and make it unable to serve the American people and to invest in the American people and to make us prosperous and effective going forward. It's a very straightforward proposition. I think it's as undemocratic and as anti-American as anything I've ever seen. One last thing, Tom, on your efforts uh, to uh, get a petition going to raise support for an imp impeachment of the president. Uh, Democrats like David Axelrod have called it a vanity project. Others have asked, why not just take the money you're spending on that effort, put it to a candidate you like? At what point would you give up? Well, actually, what we've seen in response to this petition is a massive response much greater than we expected. And we've seen over three million people sign on. We've seen people who are very disturbed by this president and the threat he poses to the American people. And it frankly doesn't surprise me that all of these political insiders find it a threat to, you know, their power. So the fact of the matter is what we're doing is trying to give a voice to the American people so they can speak up together and demand some sanity from Washington, D.C., which is Jim exactly Hines what we're not getting. Further. Representative Jim Hines again, has gone even further. He says it actually hurts the Democrats' ability to take more House seats at the midterms. You know, that's amazing because it's overwhelmingly supported uh, by Democrats. So the fact of the matter is what you see is a bunch of people from inside Washington, D.C. who find this threatening, but the American people absolutely love it. So I think that's the distinction you have to understand is they're the people inside the beltway and then they're the human beings who are American citizens. And the distinction is very clear. Tom, we got to run. I uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for the time. Great to talk to you. Uh, Tom Thanks for having me. Uh. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.